Um, so my name's Corby Campbell, and uh, I grew up normal, um, just like uh, whatever normal is. Um, I had full body function, at least. I, I haven't always been in a chair. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be able to do a backflip off a wall. Like the, the, not like stand on a wall and jump off it, but like where you run up a wall and like do a backflip and land it. I thought it was the coolest thing. I don't even remember where I saw it. Um, but then uh, fast forward to college, I'm in my first semester of college and I'm just uh, kind of feeling like, like I wanted to get some energy out. I'm tired of sitting all day, which is really ironic now. Um, and then I went to drop my backpack and I went and did one backflip off a wall. I'm just fine, and I must have got my feet wet or something because it's on the second attempt that I must I slipped and I, I landed on the back of my neck, um, and then an alligator came out of a nearby moat and and snapped down on it. And okay, the alligator's no alligator. Um, I just landed on my neck um, and and broke my broke my neck and it bruised my spine. Um, what it means for me is I, I basically I, I bruised my C5 C6 vertebrae area. And the way your body works is it sends when you want to wiggle your toes, your brain sends a signal to your spine. It goes down your spinal column and then it breaks out and it tells your toes to move. Um, or if someone taps you on the leg, it comes up to the a certain point of the spinal column. It comes up, tells your brain you're being touched. And so when I bruised my spine at the C5, C6 area, any signal that tries to get below that is just blocked. And so I had to like find a lot of unique ways to do basic things. Uh, for example, um, my chair tilts like this because I used to be really lightheaded at first. And so um, I'd spend a lot of time reclined like this with a headrest. But when I go to eat like cereal, you kind of like slide a spoon in and you go to take a bite of cereal and uh, you get to about here and you can't probably can't tell from that angle, but I'm at the 90 degrees right here and I'm still like a foot from my face. And so at this point, I can't control it anymore and it just falls and I like spill cereal down my shirt. Um, and so you have to like, you're trying so hard. I had to find different ways to do things like to be like, well, if I, if I fall and I'm hitting here and if I aim high enough, Ha ha! Cereal, you know, and so I had to find different ways um, of just just moving things like that. Uh, the other reason I bring it up is it's fun when you're trying to gracefully put your arm around a girl, and you know you're going in and putting the shoulder, and you get to that 90 degree angle, and you just you just fall in and punch her in the face. And girls love being punched in the face. That's what I discovered. So no, I've had to um, discover a lot of things different on a, at a physical level, at a basic physical level. I think I was specially tailored to, to be um, in this challenge, to have this experience. Um, and I really think that all people, if they really look for it, are also specially tailored to be in the, the trials and, and um, that they, they have. Um, but I definitely had a lot of, uh, I was blessed with a lot of confidence and a lot of peace. Um, I did still have hard times. It's, uh, my, I broke my neck November 5th, 2004, um, which is you know, 17 years ago. My 17th year break anniversary is coming up in November. If you had made a different decision 17 years ago, trying to imagine what life would be like now, like I wouldn't have learned any of the things I, I know. I wouldn't have met my wife, I'm sure. Um, not that I met her through wheelchair specific stuff, but my life would have been on such a different path that like I would have met all sorts of different people and done all, had all sorts of different experiences. And I really like the person I am now. And I think I'm a better person than at the point I broke my neck. I love it. I get to make all sorts of wheelchair jokes. And then people look at you funny, but you get away with it. You know, even just simple stuff. They're like, oh, that's lame. And I'm like, what's wrong with being lame? And people are like, uh, I, I just, uh, I mean, not, not your kind of lame. You know, and just, just little things like that. I get to make all sorts of, um, just have fun with my, my, my differences and my experience. Um, but, you know, it's, it's less convenient to be in a wheelchair. I wouldn't mind not being in a wheelchair. Um, and so maybe I'd change that now, but like to, to regret and change what happened 17 years ago, like, no, absolutely not. I would not, I would not go back in time and erase that. I would, it would erase everything that I am now. And, and I definitely like who I am now and I wouldn't want to undo that. So I found one of the things that, that helps me be positive a lot of the time. Uh, one, one key is just gratitude, which is kind of, it, it sounds like something you've heard before, but it's uh, seriously, it does focusing on things that, that uh, you're grateful for um, more consistently helps you just recognize more things you're grateful for. And it just doesn't leave room to think about things that tear you down because so I do have I do have limitations. Like if I drop something on the floor, it is really hard for me to find a way to get out and get at it. If it's if it's light, maybe I can get a hanger out of the closet and I can scoop it up. But most of the time, I'm gonna just ask someone to pick it up for me. You know, I have. It's not about ignoring what is. 
Um, but focusing on the, the positive aspects. Scorby's my man first. All the time. Yeah. No complaint. We'll carry all her stuff. Uh, I'll sit on his lap. We'll go for, he calls it permacuddle. So mm-hmm. I'll sit on his lap and we'll go for rides around the neighborhood. And it's really funny when people see us because you can see them like double take out of their cars. Be like, what are they doing? What's that? What's and we sometimes if we pass older people, they'll yell that they're jealous or, hey, it's my turn. And it's funny. So one of my biggest pet peeves about Corby being in a wheelchair is how much people like give us credit and praise and adulation for something that we just like it's just what we do every day because so people will be like oh my gosh you're such an amazing person for marrying him and oh my gosh how do you deal with being in a wheelchair or, or, that must be so hard yeah even i'll be at walmart and just a random stranger will come up to me and be like you're so inspiring and i'm like i'm at walmart dude like what buying m and you know, usually just buying yeah yeah crispy ones they're the best kind. Crispy M&M's. And so it's really bothered me. And I had to stop and think about why. And it's because everybody has a thing. And so especially when it's a friend or like a neighbor that I know is struggling really hard with something that I know about that no one else knows about. It really bothers me that they're giving me so much admiration when I know that they're dealing with something else. Um, so everybody on the planet has at least one thing that they're dealing with at any given time. And you don't know just by looking at them how hard it is for them or what they're going through. So if you look at any of the people at Walmart, I would uh, venture to guess that we're actually some of the people who are struggling the least, even though it looks like we're struggling the most. But if you talk to any of them, you can have people who are going through a divorce. You wouldn't know that by looking at them. People who are going through a financial hardship of some kind, People who have hidden illnesses like cancer or MS or um, depression or anxiety or addiction or any number of things that are so much harder than dealing with a wheelchair. Like we set up our house, we pay a bunch of money for a modified van. Pretty Get much people good to, to help go. Me poop. Yeah. Like, you know, we're pretty set. Like just kind of physical needs, you know. Um, if you ask so- us what our biggest struggle right now is, it wouldn't be anything to do with a wheelchair at all. Mm-hmm. And so, like, everybody has a thing, and you just have to be aware of it. I think really overcoming something should be, we should focus on, like, it's learning how to deal with, you know, it's learning how to work around. Um, it's learning your, it's learning your triggers. It's learning your, um, your boundaries. It's learning, you know, what your, your actual capabilities are, what your actual capabilities aren't. Um, I, I'm often credited with being someone that's just, like, overly optimistic. Um, and I, and I do think I'm optimistic and I, and I'm consciously optimistic. I choose to focus on the, the positive. Um, but it doesn't mean I'm ignoring the negative. I, I talked about, you know, I know I'm still in a wheelchair. Like I can't just decide that I can stand up and your child's, your challenges might be the same where you can't just, just choose to not have them. But I can definitely choose to find ways to like, oh, I'll get neighbors to help you get me out of bed so that I don't burn my wife out. Oh, I'll pick a career. I'm a software developer. So I'll pick a career that doesn't even matter that I'm in a wheelchair, you know, to work around and still provide for my family. I can, you know, I can choose to, you know, I invite people over to my house more often than I plan to go to their house because my house is set up and it's just easier. And so there's just all sorts of ways to work around the challenges you have. And I think that when you you can have a happy, successful life, you know, working around the, the, the actual limitations you have, that's that's overcoming your trial. It's not getting rid of the challenge of the trial. I had I did not grow up being like, I'm going to meet a guy in a wheelchair one day and marry him. Surprise. That's what I'm looking for in a guy. Um, I really loved dancing when I was single and I would go dancing like three times a week, mostly Lindy Hop, some ballroom. Um, so I always just planned on marrying a dancer and someone who could go hiking and camping. So that's the things that I also liked to do. And so when I met Corby, who was fantastic, I was actually really mad about it, but I didn't want to hurt Corby. And so I kind of just tried to ignore it and be like, no, this is fine. I just need to stop thinking about that. And it wasn't until I let myself be mad and disappointed and like kind of acknowledged what I had been hoping for and allowed myself to be sad about it that I was finally able to move on and be like, no, this is good. I've let myself be sad about it. I've accepted that that was something that I wanted, but that I can do without. And I'm going to move on and get something even better. And I have no regrets over it. So it's been the best thing ever. Marriage is the best. We love the best. Do you want me to do this again?